Hello and welcome to News Round, a recap of stories in the week. I am BC at Debayo. The headlines. A dual state assembly crisis deepens as 17 lawmakers purportedly unseat the leadership of the House with police taking over the assembly complex. Members of the Revolution Now movement take to the streets of various cities across the country to demand for good governance. Schools reopen after five months for exit students of secondary schools ahead of West African Certificate Examinations. And blasts rip through Beirut, Lebanese capital, leaving over 100 dead and thousands injured. News round begins with the drama that played out in the Ado State House of Assembly with the purported impeachment of the Speaker Franco Kie by 17 lawmakers. The drama began with some police officers and men of the Civil Defense Corps taking over the assembly complex, which is said to be under renovation. Our next report chronicles the events that played out in the state. Edo residents wake up to an unusual sight. The chief Anthony Nahuru complex, which houses the State House of Assembly, is occupied by the police. Tension rises as a group of people troop to the area, and in no time, supporters of the governor make their presence felt. They insist that democratic principles must be upheld. We are under the rule of law. Yes, Nobody can just wake up and want to come and destabilize a state that is peaceful, a state that is going on smoothly. The government is on course, the House of Assembly is on course. They are doing their cultural duty as prescribed in the Nigeria Constitution. While the commotion persists, a truck empties granite at the entrance of a house set to be undergoing renovation. The roof of the complex is also yanked off as some persons are seen removing the symbolic mace on top of the building. Governor Godwin Obaseki makes an appearance as he joins the Speaker of the House, Frank Okie, at the complex. The Speaker insists that the laws cannot be circumvented and that attempts to forcefully take over the House will fail. We are doing some renovation here and for, to that reason, for that reason we relocated to our old chamber. We have an old chamber that we normally would use under emergency, which we are doing. Nobody in this country is above the constitution of our country. And so, this morning, Mr. Speaker, go about your regular duties as a parliament, the way you deem, and the way the constitution prescribes. Governor Basaki vows to protect the lawmakers and security of the state. For us as the executive, we will use all the instruments available to us constitutionally to protect you and to protect the state. The Speaker of the House in the presence of the Deputy Governor, Philip Shaibu, also clarifies that remodeling work had been approved for the complex and is ongoing. <laughs> In no time, the story changes, as 14 lawmakers of the State House of Assembly, whose seats were declared vacant, are sworn in at a private location in the state. The 14 lawmakers, alongside three others who recently pledged their allegiance to Osage Izeyamu of the APC, purportedly impeached the Speaker of the House and his deputy, vowing to take over the House of Assembly. All actions of Honorable Frank Ume Okie, Okie, particularly the wrongful and illegal declaration of the seat of 14 members as vacant, is null and void. But for Honorable Okie, the action of the 17 lawmakers is a nullity. For anybody to think that he can create a government inside a government, I believe all of you know that that will be treasonable in, in terms of offense. And it will be resisted, it's unacceptable to us. Meanwhile, the Edo State chapter of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, has praised residents of the state.
for resisting what he calls the failed takeover of the State House of Assembly, allegedly by the former national chairman of the APC, Adam Zoshomele, and his supporters. However, the APC will not have any such allegations. It explains that it does not control the police and the state governor, whom it alleges is responsible for the numerous other seizures to the assembly complex, is in the best position to tell the world who's behind the police blockade of the assembly. Away from the political situation in a dose state to issues of national security, and this time the president has asked for a re-engineering of the entire security apparatus of the country. This is the outcome of the third National Security Council meeting held with service chiefs at the State House as the level of insecurity across the country keeps escalating. The National Security Advisor, Babagana Mongunu, said apart from the security situation in the country, the issue of drug addiction and trafficking is of great concern to Nigeria. The last time the president um, did not conceal his anger about the declining security situation. What he said today was virtually a reaffirmation of what he said the first time. Yes, Mr. President said, you are doing your best as far as I'm concerned, but there's still a lot more to be done. I am more concerned about the promise we made to the larger Nigerian society, and I am ordering an immediate uh, re-engineering of the entire security apparatus. And this is something that I believe will be done in a very short time. And from national security to a demand for political revolution and change in government as members of the Revolution Now movement took to the streets of various cities to drive home their demand while protesters across states carried placards with different inscriptions to challenge the level of insecurity in the country, the police also came out to stop the protesters. Solidarity songs, the usual bite for this gathering, expressing their resolve. Insecurity and unemployment top the list of reasons why they're calling for a change in government. We are joined from our financial institutions and they join the colony of unemployment. We have made a position today, and that position is resulting in a claim that the continuous operation in the Guardia Commission was. It started off as a peaceful protest, but not for long. With the police at the scene, the protesters dispersed, ending the protest abruptly, same way it did last year, with some protesters arrested. Lagos, the protesters gathered as early as 10 a.m. at the state capital Ikeja. It was a large procession. But there was a pushback from the police. The action of the police was met with some resistance. Police force have no right to disrupt a legitimate protest. We are going to, we are a peaceful protester to march for our freedom. Yeah. Revolution! Yeah. In the southwest state of Oshun, the protesters are not in a large number, but their voice was loud enough to get the attention of authorities. The arrival of the men of the DSS threw the scene into chaos with some protesters arrested. The founder of the revolutionary movement, Mr. Omo Yele Shoure, is currently in a legal battle with the federal government after he was arrested last year for organizing a nationwide protest and calling for a revolution against the government. 
a move authorities have totally condemned. The fine for hate speech is now 5 million naira, up from 500,000 naira, and that's coming from the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed. This formed part of the unveiling of the amended sixth edition of the Broadcasting Code in Lagos, southwest Nigeria. Representatives of various broadcast organizations, journalists and staff of the National Broadcasting Commission gathered for the unveiling of the amended sixth edition of the National Broadcasting Code. The Minister of Information and Culture leads the unveiling. Highlights of the amendments include but are not limited to the following. The provisions on exclusivity and monopoly. This antitrust provision would boost local content and local industry. He also took out time to commend broadcast organizations that have been giving time for national emergencies just before dropping the bombshell. Another highlight of the amendment is the provision that has raised the fine for hate speeches and divisive messages from half a million naira to five million naira. We believe that this will serve as a deterrent to those who want to use our broadcast stations to sow seed of discord. Our attention remains the good of the country. We need to catalyze the growth of the local industry. Shortly after unveiling the amended broadcasting code, stakeholders met virtually to discuss the issues raised by the amendment. There's a bit of a clash there in terms of how businesses, I mean, how investors can benefit from the code vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, what the code is doing to protect the local industry. Most broadcasters are now have, now have collaborations with foreign media. To have those collaborations, we need to assure them that their rights are safe and secure. We will struggle to do that now because we cannot tell them that it will not be broadcast everywhere across different from our platform, nor can we guarantee revenue if the revenues will be regulated by the NBC. The acting director general of the NBC allays fears of breakups. There is a disassumption that uh, the new provisions are compulsive. There is no way in the, in, in, in the provisions of the amendment where we have said that uh, there must be compuls compulsive deal. You know, we are simply saying that when you go to acquire rights or where you want to invest in Nigeria, we have a national philosophy, a national ideology that encourages that you make these rights available to as many Nigerians that are interested. The NBC insists there are opportunities for constant review of the code, but advised all stakeholders to note that this amendment is signed, sealed and delivered, and the Commission is committed to making it work for the good of the country. Neo Taibe, Channels Television News. Still ahead on News Round, the PTF is calling for caution as schools resume. You stay with us. Welcome back to News Round. Our website, channelstv.com, has more information on our top stories and others. Subscribe and watch Channel Television's live stream on YouTube and other social media platforms using a mobile device or download the Channel TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. You can also watch us via smart TV platforms on Apple TV, Android TV, Fire TV, and Roku. And when you get the Channel TV or Channel 24 apps, you can catch up with news updates on the go, plus the eyewitness feature designed for you to share pictures, videos, or news of happenings around you. Install the apps, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. Follow the resumption guidelines strictly as final class students return to school. This is the admonition of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. 
The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Bot Mustafa, said the call is necessary because the reopening of schools could be a veritable source for increased community transmission of coronavirus. The Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 announced August the 4th, 2020 for the reopening of schools for students in their exit classes when it briefed the nation last week. It's less than 24 hours to that resumption date. And the PTF at this briefing is concerned about the need for safe reopening as it fears a possible spike in the number of cases as students return to classes. I wish to reinstate that the education sector is critical for the development of our children and our nation. Reopening the sector is also a source of concern based on the fact that the school, school system remains a veritable ground for increasing community transmission if appropriate protocols are not put in place. The Presidential Task Force wishes to implore stakeholders to ensure that the agreed protocols are put in place and measures strictly adhered to. The number of positive cases for COVID-19 is on the rise in Nigeria as the country records a spike from a little over 10,000 cases as of the end of May this year to over 43,000 confirmed cases by the end of July. The government says it's working to reduce infection and fatality. Our objective is to reduce case fatalities to less than 1% from the present just over 2%. And we are working on innovative interventions with prospects of improving survival chances, especially for the elderly and those with comorbidities. The Director General of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control also speaks on government's efforts to ensure access to vaccines when they come on stream. Through a structure called the ACT as Accelerator, a way, a mechanism through which CEPI is working with WHO and Gavi to ensure that vaccines are available to countries regardless of their ability to pay. It's been five months since Nigeria recorded her index case of COVID-19. Several measures, including a lockdown, was employed by the government to stop the spread of the virus. But will another lockdown be necessary in the face of rising cases? We have to reopen safely. We cannot risk another sh shutdown, nor can we risk having more lives being lost. As the task force prepares to submit its sixth interim report to President Mohamed Buhari later this week, many look forward to the recommendations that the task force will be making to drive the national response toward flattening the curve. I think I had only... Meanwhile, across the country, students of exit classes did return to their classrooms after five months of the stay-at-home order by the federal government. Most of the schools are observing strict safety precautions as they reopen, and students uh, and their parents expressed mixed feelings over the exercise. After months of compulsory shutdown of schools resulting in the disruption of academic calendar and the growth of online classrooms, it's back to school time for these students who are hoping to pick from where they left off. At this private school in Lagos, the arrangement appears to be elaborate, with a medical team on standby and a thorough screening process in place. Two meters measured and other public health safety guidelines visible, the school authorities say they are not taking chances. They don't want to risk anybody coming from home. Even the staff are going to be camped in the school to prevent moving from home to school. Vetland Grammar School, Agege, is within Education District 1. The story is not different and authorities say provision has been made for vulnerable students and anyone showing COVID-19 symptoms. In addition to what the Lagos State Government did, the schools in NS preparation had already also made provisions for all this. So I can categorically conclude that the school has more than enough provision to take care of the pupils while they are in school for this period of work examinations. Protocols for entry has been set, face marks on, temperature checks, washing of hands. Some students who do not take it seriously are set straight by the on-duty administrator. Students take their desks into classroom following the social distancing rule. 
With classrooms prepared, lessons commence. Going by the number of students on the ground, this teacher does not foresee any problems. Every student and teacher will be provided with a face mask that is reusable. We have provided sanitizers in all the schools. Next is Akwaibom State. At this school, students are assembled and behavioral expectations are spelled out. We have enough space that we are able to provide the social distancing both in the dormitories and in the classes. We have enough classroom space. And we don't just have a sick bay, we have a full-fledged hospital with the resident doctor. Schools in Ogun State follow the same precautionary measures. It's there to take the temperature as it comes in and the hand washing materials are there. And they, are, they have also been, been uh, that they, they have also been educated about how to comply. Abuja, the federal capital, is the last port of call. On resumption, the students are subjected to health checks in line with COVID-19 protocols. Boarding students are not left out as parents express concern. I have a little challenge with this hand washing. This one you put your hand to open and uh, I think there is another one you can put your leg or the kubiku since it's a federal school. Those who are supposed to supervise the enforce to enforce these uh, measures come in here and check. I think they will be on their toes to do the right thing. The schools have also been rearranged to accommodate the guidelines for school resumption in the dormitories and classrooms. They are already missing in the crowd. There's no crowd here. There's no, it's too, the facilities are too big for the number, but uh, we're, we're working with the number. For the students, the time away has filled them with eagerness to get cracking. Even the online learning, we don't understand it that much, so I've been waiting for the day we are going to resume school. As other schools follow suit, it is best wishes to students and teachers in health and knowledge. And back here in Lagos, Muslims have observed their weekly Jumat prayers in mosques following the reopening of worship centers in the state after more than four months of closure. Social distancing was enforced at the Alausa Central Mosque, among other safety protocols. The state government has emphasized that only the, only the Jumat service has been approved. The imam who led the prayer session, Mr. Hakim Kusoko, appealed to Muslim faithful to practice cleanliness in order to combat the deadly virus. A news round, wind, news round winds down with explosions that hit the city of Beirut, killing at least 154 people and wounding more than 5,000, causing widespread damage. Over 1,000 people have been hospitalized and 120 still in critical condition. The blast, which flattened much of the capital's port, was felt in Cyprus, an island around 240 kilometers from Beirut. According to President Michel Aoun, the blast was caused by 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate stored and safely in a warehouse. And that's news round this week. Thank you for watching IMBC at Divayo.